Now look, this is what, this is what the Lord said to Elijah. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers. He's speaking that to this widow. Until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. Now you'd have to have a lot of faith to believe him for that, wouldn't you? If you've only got enough for one little bit left, she's with a prophet. The Lord told her he was coming. So she war he warned her in advance that Elijah was going to be coming. She had to have enough faith right now to ignore the natural and say, okay, the man of God said that I'm always going to have enough. I don't know how I'm going to have enough, but I'm getting the how out of here because I don't know how. I'm just going to believe the prophet. So I'll just take you there for a minute. In 1 Kings 16, verse 30, it says, Ahab did what was evil in the Lord's sight even more than any of the kings before him. And as though it were not enough to follow the sinful example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbal of the Sidonians, and he began to bow down and worship to Baal. All right, this is the king of Israel, is bowing down to a foreign idol, Baal. And he married the daughter of one of those uh, Sidonians that his name was Ethbel. Her father's name had Baal right in it. So this is a problem. And first, in verse 32 of 1 Kings 16, it says, First they have built a temple and an altar for Baal in Samaria. And then he set up an Asherah pole. And this is quite a condemning verse in 1 Kings 16, 33. It says of Ahab that he did more to provoke the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than any of the other kings of Israel before him. That's really saying something. And when God has people who know how to hear his voice, and that's called Christians, we're supposed to live in a prophetic lifestyle that we're hearing the voice of the Lord, sons of Issachar. We, we know the signs and the times, and we know what we should do. That's what prophetic people do. And that's what Elijah had to do. So he goes to him in, in chapter 17, verse 1. Elijah told King Ahab, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few days until I give the word. Then the Lord said to Elijah, All right, let me just back up for a minute. You put yourself in that position where you've had to confront something that's not comfortable to confront. He's the king of the whole country. And we know it created a lot of tension between Jezebel and Ahab against Elijah. They wanted to take him out. This is chapter 17. 18 is when you see that amazing scene of the, the contest of the two altars and God bringing down fire. <laughs> but this is the, the chapter right before. Now remember, James said Elijah was a man just like us. And now verse 2 of 1 Kings 17 says, after he gives the word to Ahab, not going to rain, then the Lord said to Elijah, okay, what is the Lord saying to you? We have to all ask ourselves that question because he's always speaking to us because he loves us and he's a good father. We sang it, right? What is he saying to you right now? And you say, well, I'm not hearing him too clearly right now. Well, then remember, Jeremiah 29, 13 said, when you seek me, you will find me if you're seeking me with all your heart. So could be one of the reasons you're not hearing clearly is you haven't been seeking him with all your heart. Maybe go on a fast. That's, that's a good sign that says, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever it takes because I need to hear your voice. So this is what the Lord tells him. Go to the east and hide by the Kareth Brook near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you. Now, how many of you would have been thrilled about that word? Bring what the raven, you said eat what the ravens bring me? Are they going to stop at Burger King and get me a Whopper first and bring it in a bag? Like, what's a raven going to bring me? This is what we do in the natural mind. And, and why God loved this man so much. Go to the east, hide by the Kareth Brook, go drink from the brook, for I have commanded the ravens to bring you food. And, and Elijah's like, really? Can't you die? What's plan B? Give me a different plan, God. That sounds ridiculous. Ravens. Who ever heard of ravens bringing people food? He didn't say any of that, did he? So what it says, verse 5, so Elijah did as the Lord told him. <laughs> He's a man just like us, but boy, did he have faith, didn't he? If he could go hide by the brook and wait for the ravens to bring him food, then I better make some changes in my life because I don't know if I had the faith to do that. Well, it says he was just like us. He camped beside the Kareth Brook east of the Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and meat. 
each morning and evening. And he drank from the brook. So if you believe God, it's going to look silly to other people who don't. I mean, the Bible says that the things of the Spirit can't even be understood by people who are still in the carnal flesh. So if you've got unsafe friends and family and you're doing something and they say, that sounds ridiculous. Say, I don't care how it sounds. I know the Lord told me to do this. So I'll see you in a month and let's check back and see who had good results. And when you know how to hear the voice of the Lord, boy, you get really good results. All right, so things change again. They brought him the bread and the meat, but after a while, it says in verse 7 of 1 Kings 17, after a while, the brook dried up, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. Well, he's not surprised by that, because he's the one that called the drought. So he knew while he was at the brook, this is only one stop, because this water is going to go away at some point, and then what am I going to do? He didn't have to wonder about what he was going to do because the Lord was telling him what to do. We have to say the same thing right now. I'm not sure about my future, but I know who holds my future. And he is going to give me direction to cause me to prosper. I have to have faith for that, no matter how confusing it looks. And if you're around a lot of pessimistic people right now, probably not a good idea. When Jesus needed to see somebody get healed, he didn't bring a bunch of unbelievers. He brought people in a room that had the faith to believe for the miracle. So watch what goes in your ear gate and your eye gate and let it be the word, the truth of the word, teaching from anointed people. You can get a lot of that on our YouTube channel, lots of hours of really good teaching on our YouTube channel. So, okay, runs out of water. And now verse eight says, then the Lord said to Elijah. Okay, so if you're in that place where, okay, Lord, you told me to come down here and the ravens would come. I had enough faith to believe that. But now there's no more water, so what are you going to do? And don't be looking at your watch. Well, any time now, Lord, you can tell me any time, whenever you're ready, just tell me what the next step is. He loves you. He's going to tell you. So he said, this is what the Lord said in verse 8. Go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I've instructed a widow there to feed you. Did he question it? No. Verse 10. So he went to Zarephath. <laughs> Man. It's convicting watching this guy, isn't it? He hears the Lord and he does it. He doesn't ask how. He doesn't ask why. What took you so long? He's just obedient. And it says, as he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her, would you please bring me a little, uh, I'm sorry, a little water in a cup? Verse 11, she was going to get it and he called to her and said, bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. I only have a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. Verse 13. Now, remember, the Lord told Elijah that the Lord was going to speak to this woman and tell her to feed him. Remember that? She doesn't say anything about that when she sees Elijah. She doesn't say, oh, yeah, the Lord told me you were coming. She's wound up in her fear because she thinks she, her and her son is going to die. She knows he's a man of God because she says in verse 12, I swear by the Lord your God, I don't have a single piece of bread. So she knows who he is. And verse 13, boy, this is key right here. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Let's just focus on that for a minute, okay? This is the time we're living in where there's a lot of fear in the atmosphere. Don't let it be contagious on you. Well, I mean, does she have a reason in the natural to be afraid? Yes. But what does the man of God say? Don't be afraid. That's got to that's gotta warn you that you can get hijacked emotionally, right? She had reason in the natural to be concerned, but she was with a man of God, and he was hearing the Lord's voice, and that's a really good thing to have, isn't it? <laughs> Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. I just want to burn that in for you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, meaning she was going to go get and, you know, make this little bit of bread left. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this, I'm sorry, I skipped an important part. He said, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do what you just said, but make a little bread for me first. <laughs> then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Come on, say that with me. 
I can't hear you, but I just want you to say it anyway. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. All right, so man, if we're not living our lives this way, then we're really living underneath the level that he wants us to be at. Maybe you're not hearing a, a loud, audible voice, but you should be able to go to Scripture and say, these are the times and seasons I'm in. What, what's your word for me, Lord? And man, if he loves us like we know he does, he's going to give you a word. Now look, this is, what, this is what the Lord said to Elijah. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers. Speaking that to this widow. Until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. Now you'd have to have a lot of faith to believe him for that, wouldn't you? If you've only got enough for one little bit left, she's with a prophet. The Lord told her he was coming. So she war he warned her in advance that Elijah was going to be coming. She had to have enough faith right now to ignore the natural and say, okay, the man of God said that I'm always going to have enough. I don't know how I'm going to have enough, but I'm getting the how out of here because I don't know how. I'm just going to believe the prophet. He said, there will always be flour and olive oil left in my containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. In verse 15, just like Elijah was obedient when God spoke to him, verse 15 says, so she did as Elijah said. Huh. And she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. Oh, that's an encouraging word, isn't it? There, were always, there was always enough flour and oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. And I know what time it is. It's 11.05, so there's so much in that story. Read the rest of 17. Read 18. It's so encouraging. 